Hey guys, this is Aryan and uh, welcome back to One Stop Aviation. Today, let's talk about the altimeter. The altimeter, as the name suggests, indicates what altitude the aircraft is flying at. As we climb, the pressure decreases. This is the exact logic that the altimeter exploits. The altimeter senses change in static pressure and indicates a proportional altitude to it. It's basically an aneroid barometer in which the scales are graduated to indicate altitude instead of pressure. The construction and the working of an altimeter is very simple. I'll explain it in a minute. So this is what the construction looks like. It's very simple. Static pressure is fed into the instrument case. There is a capsule which has vacuum inside it. So what happens is that, for example, as you climb, the pressure around the vacuum is going to reduce, causing the capsule to inflate. What this will do is exert a pressure on the mechanical linkages. This will move upwards and this will cause a pointer to move downwards, which will show an increase in the reading which is basically an increase in altitude because your pressure is dropping so you're climbing the exact opposite happens during descent and this is basically how the altimeter works now what we saw earlier was the example of a simple altimeter there are different types of altimeters this is called a sensitive altimeter so what happens in this case is that there are more capsules so it is much more sensitive and it drives more than one pointer so there are three pointers you can also change the subscale setting by which you can either set QNH, QFE. We'll discuss more on that in another video regarding altimetry techniques. And this is basically what a sensitive altimeter looks like. This is what a servo assisted altimeter looks like. So as you can see, the same method where static is fed into the case, there are capsules. In the normal position, there is no current between the I bar and the E bar. In case the capsules expand or contract, there is a current induced between the I bar and E bar. And this is amplified through the amplifier and the signals are sent to the servo motor and gearbox, which drives the pointers. This is the best kind of altimeter. And back in the day, we did not have this technology. It's after this kind of technology were we able to introduce something like RVSM because the big reason why RVSM was uh, you know not practiced back in the day was because our altimeters weren't sensitive enough at high altitudes. Why this happens is because uh, the rate of change of pressure is much lesser at high altitudes than it is close to the ground. This is what the altimeter reading looks like on a modern jetliner. This is of a 737. It is something quite similar in the Airbus A320. Now let's talk about the different uh, errors experienced by the altimeter. So the first error is blockage error. By blockage, I mean blockage of the static vent. So in that event, the altimeter will read correct only at the altitude where the blockage occurred. Okay. So uh, what this results in is that if you're climbing, the altimeter is going to underheat, and when you're descending, it's going to overheat. So how it's going to underheat? Basically, since your static vent is blocked and you're climbing, the static pressure inside the case is going to be the old static pressure of the lower altitude, but you're actually higher, so it's going to underheat and in descent the opposite will happen it's obviously gonna be blocked again and it's gonna have the pressure from the higher altitude while you're actually lower so that that's gonna cause the altimeter to overheat this is basically how the blockage uh, static vent block uh, error works Second is uh, hysteris error or it's also known as the you know time lag error. Uh, this happens when the aircraft has spent a lot of time or a significant amount of time at a particular altitude. This is mainly due to the elastic properties of the you know parts used in the construction of the altimeter. What this does is that it uh, shows some time lag when you climb or descend after spending a lot of time at a particular altitude. The third is known as uh, position error. This is due to you know turbulent airflow around the static vent so the altimeter is unable to sense the true static pressure. Fourth is maneuver induced error. This is due to, as the name suggests, due to some maneuver like some pitching or banking. There's some uh, transient change in flow of air around the static vent causing, you know, again, it's similar to position error in a way. Basically, it cannot sense the correct static pressure and it gives an inaccurate reading because of that. The fifth is barometric error. For example, if you don't set the right QNH or, you know, something like that. So obviously the altimeter is going to show some disturbance from the real thing. And that's basically what the error is. And the is uh, temperature error. So for example, if you took off with some place where the OAT was 25, you flew to another place where the OAT is 30. So you're going from a area of lower temperature to an area of high temperature. So your altimeter in the process is going to under it. Basically low, high, low, and then high, low, high. So when you go from low to high, it's going to show lower. When you go from high to low, it's going to show higher. This also happens in, uh, you know, change of pressure when you're flying from one place to another. So yeah, these are basically all the errors uh, the 
ऑल्टी बी आई मेक अपरेट वीडियो टॉकिंग अबाउट ऑल दी ऑल्टीमेट्री टेक्निक्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल वील टॉक अबाउट क्यू एन एच क्यू एफ ई ट्रांसिशन फ्लाइट लेवल ट्रांसिशन ऑल्टीट्यूड यू नो वेन यू स्विच ओवर फ्रॉम क्यू एन एच टू क्यू एन ई आई मेक अनदर वीडियो ऑन दैट सो स्टेट यून फॉर दैट सो वी हैव रीच द एंड ऑफ द वीडियो थैंक यू सो मच फॉर वॉचिंग प्लीज लाइक एंड सब्सक्राइब एंड स्टेट यून फॉर माई नेक्स्ट वीडियो टिल देन जय हिंद